If you wanna save a lot of money when buying camera lenses, then this video is for you. It's no surprise that photography gear is insanely expensive, especially lenses. But what if I told you that you can actually save a lot of money when buying new lenses? The secret is to figure out what exactly you're gonna be using that lens for. I feel like we are always looking for lenses with fast apertures and forget that lenses with slow apertures like f4 still exist. Most of the time you can pick up an f4 lens for half the price of its f2.8 version. Take the Canon RF 70-200 as an example. You can buy the f2.8 version for $2,800 or you can buy the f4 version for I think $1,600. That's a $1,200 difference. But before I get into which lens you should get and who these lenses are for this is my Canon 24 to 70 f4 and the street photography I've been able to capture with this lens is something else I think this lens is amazing for street photography but lately I've even been using it for portraits when I'm in the studio when I first bought this lens a couple years ago I'm not gonna lie the only reason why I bought it was because it was cheaper than the f 2.8 version at the time I was only shooting street photography so having a fast lens didn't matter to me for me, my style and the way I shot street photography was similar to landscapes. I was mostly shooting with a tighter or slower aperture to capture a lot of detail in my shot. As I transitioned to shooting portraits, it was necessary to start working with faster lenses. For portraits, it's important to seclude your subject and separate them from the background. If you don't do this, it'll look like the photo was taken with a webcam. Everything will be in focus and that's not what we want. The best way of getting this look is by using a lens with a fast aperture, something like f1.4, 1.8, even up to 2.8. Using a faster lens will get that bokeh or the blurry background we all love. But do you need a super expensive fast lens to achieve a blurry background? The truth is no. One of the simplest ways to get a blurry background is to create more distance between your subject and the background itself. This could be as easy as telling your model to step forward. If you're shooting portraits in an open sunflower field at an aperture of f4 and there's a barn 30 feet away in the background, you will still achieve a blurry background simply because of the distance between your subject and the barn. This also ties into compression. Compression happens when you stand far away from your subject and you use a telephoto or a long focal length lens to capture your shot. By doing this, it actually pulls the background closer to the subject, making the background bigger and blurrier, if that's even a word. You can easily use a 70-200 f4 for portraits and get some crazy results and the bokeh would be just as good as if you were using a faster lens. But Stefano, how do I know which lens I should get? How do I know if I should go with the f2.8 version or the f4 version? Well, if you're a landscape photographer and shooting landscapes is all you do, I can't think of a good enough reason why you would need a lens with a faster aperture like f2.8 or below. The reason why I say that is because if you're a landscape photographer, you're most likely shooting over f4 anyway to get everything in focus. And you're most likely shooting during the day or when there's light out so you can afford to stop down. In these cases, I would say buying an f4 lens makes the most sense and would be a great choice if you're a portrait or wedding photographer i don't know how you like your portraits but i know i want my portraits to have that nice blurry background behind my subject for portraits unless you shoot outside all the time then in most cases you don't have that flexibility to separate your subject 20 feet from the background use a 200 millimeter lens or to shoot in perfectly lit environments all the time wedding photographers have to deal with low light situations all the time so having a faster lens will allow more light in to give you more room to control your settings so if you're planning on shooting portraits or weddings i would suggest going with a faster lens like an f 2.8 or under. If you're a fashion photographer or a portrait photographer who only works in studios with lots of lighting, there's no need to have a faster lens. You're probably already using a tighter aperture to focus on your whole subject, but also to capture all the detail in uh, your model skin. So like me, using a lens like a 24 to 70 f4 would be a great option if you wanted to save a thousand or more dollars. Before I wrap up this video, here are some things to know before choosing between the two lenses. If you're new to photography, slow lenses will allow less light into the sensor, so you would have to compensate for light either by adjusting your shutter speed, ISO, or using a physical light. 
Fast lenses, on the other hand, will allow more light into the sensor, which means you'll have more flexibility and room to control settings. However, shooting at a faster aperture doesn't always mean that you're going to get the best quality out of your photos. Sometimes if you're shooting at an aperture of f1.2 or f1.4, you can think that you're nailing focus, but when you bring the photos into Lightroom, you realize that some of the photos were out of focus and focus just on the subject's nose. This is why I love shooting with my 24 to 70 f4 when I'm working in a studio setting. Shooting at a higher aperture like f5.6 ensures I'm getting my whole subject in focus. Not just the nose or the eyes, but the eyes, nose, hair, clothes, and everything. Also, when you're shooting against a paper backdrop, it doesn't matter if the background is blurry or not. So before anything, you need to figure out what exactly you need that lens for and the situation you may find yourself in. With that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap up this video. Let me know down in the comments which lens you have in your wish list, and if you found this video helpful make sure you hit that like button hit that subscribe button and hit that bell to be notified when i post a new video peace